Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube coverage here in New York City for our Cube Studio East. We're on the balcony overlooking the show floor of the New York Stock Exchange. A lot of action, a lot of trades happening. We had great conversations about AI leaders here, and of course, ranging the conversation into how the finance market. We had a great conversation about private companies. Of course, founders have been the big story, and a hot startup here is in the studio. Chris, he's the global VP of growth at Kubia.ai, which stands for Cube in Hebrew, which is not related to the Cube, but we like the company. Um, great founding team. Kubi has been been on the Cube many times. Great to have you, good Chris. Oh, pleasure to be here. You're our first professional soccer player that's been on the Cube. Um, former soccer player. Former, unfortunately, former. So yeah. you were Croatia. Is that where you play? Croatia? Yeah. Cool. Um, de defense. Defense. Central midfield. All right. Okay. Good sliding tackles all the time. We had no red cards. <laughs> I'm fortunate a lot of those, but yes. <laughs> Red cards happen a lot on defense. Well, great to have you on, and congratulations on, on coming on, on to Kubi. I know you had some good successes in, in tech. Um, I like this company. They're like, I'm not pre-Series A, but they really cracked the code. I've been using the term delegation yep. um, lately because uh, I think, you know, the founder, Amit Govern, talks about this, delegating trust and having right. trust. It's been the theme of all conversations around unlocking data, automation, needs trust and delegation to create these intentional relationships um, to for AI to work. And then agents and having the right teammates is a critical um, thing. But what I love about Kubi is they're making platform engineering really easy. Um, and I love how they've integrated into Slack. Yeah. Um, by Slack, it's just you just use Slack and you just give it a command and just magic happens. And I think that's a great interface with voice coming over the top. You're going to see a lot more of that user experience, making the life easier for platform engineers. So I'm a big fan of what Kubi is doing. Um, again, I think you guys still haven't had your breakout yet. Um, I know you got some news coming yeah. um, that we, that's going to come out of KubeCon coming up. Correct. So give us the give us your take. You're looking at the growth, looking at customers. What are some of the things that you guys are talking about now as you go into KubeCon? I'm sure, I'm sure there's still been some, I know you have some big customers, but like, what is the conversation like when you talk to customers? Yeah, well, you put it really well mentioning Slack, right? The whole idea of this concept of delegation, it has to meet the user where they are every day, right? So on a daily day of use, like they would yeah. talk to a human being through Slack, yeah. they're talking here to AI teammates. And what we're seeing on the market is more and more companies coming back with automation was a great concept, but in, when they put it into work, it really didn't work for them, right? Yeah. So we, we kind of approach it from the aspect of, you know, time to automation. Uh, paradox and that's where you know when you're putting in a lot of effort and time yeah. to create these automation often enough you're not getting the value out of it that you would so that's that's what we tackle and that's why we say delegation is the new automation like you mentioned and that's what it's actually really resonating with especially enterprise customers you know chris one of the things we just had an interview earlier we had ahmed on from kiva.ia he's the ceo founder um he hit a home run because i like what he said around they know the customer they're going after, the human in the loop. Yeah. What I like about Kubia is that it has, it's like DevOps AI built by DevOps pros. Correct. So the domain expertise is super critical in this AI equation because AI is not the answer to everything. It's not the silver bullet. It's the human augmentation and productivity gains only come if the models work better. Exactly. Right? So... What I like about what you guys have done with the platform engine, I've been covering every KubeCon ever, so since mm -hmm. Kubernetes started, there's a lot of like weird things that go on in Kubernetes, right? Like, yeah. and it's as it gets more stable and has this Linux moment being kind of stable and running and orchestrating workloads, now the engineers who are doing platform engineering, soon to be doing data engineering, need to be moving faster. Correct. And so there's a lot of like weird command line scripts and code that gets done in managing things. And then usually you do things like, in a silo, I got to check this node cluster. So, Correct. but now you can just have AI do that all at once. Exactly, that's the whole idea, right? The idea is not to exchange humans; it's mm -hmm. to enable them to work more effectively with AI teammates, right? They can actually go in and do all that work that you just mentioned for them, so they can actually focus on the critical tasks. You know, last night at the uh, founder dinner reception we had here, um, I was talking to uh, my uh, in my group. I was kind of the captain of a kind of discussion group. Um, Someone said AI is a team sport and it's not a hobby. It's really work, but it's fun, right? So it's like, it's not just, hey, I'm going to do this for fun. It's like a team sport where you got to rely on each other. Exactly. This is where DevOps, I think, has been really such a great movement is because 
the DevOps culture is all about key and scale. Yep. And this is where I think AI is either going to succeed or fail in organizations because if you look at it as just, oh, I got AI solving my problems, but it's got to work within a team construct. Correct. What's your reaction to that? I fully agree. Um, the whole concept in our approach is that you can actually scale your team without needing to scale the headcount, meaning you're getting your team to be more effective in what they do, but they have to work together with AI. You can't just yeah. get, let AI do everything for you. Yeah. What's, I got, so not, you're new to Kubi, so I have to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. What impressed you about what they got on when you, was it the demo, was it the team? What was the reason why you joined Kubi? Yeah, I mean, two, two critical things, right? It's the people and the product. Um, I was fascinated both with the founders of Kubia, um, both Amit and Shaked, domain experts, like you mentioned, which is critical for the yeah. product <laughs> and the product on the other side. Um, yeah, we just released AI teammates a month and a half ago officially, um, and we already have some very big enterprise customers backing us up and running their critical you know, use cases uh, with us. So. I mean, I love the name teammates. It was a good call where I came up with that marketing. I like the DevOps for DevOps, I mean, built by DevOps mm -hmm. people, because I think that's at the end of the day, trust for me, like, because a lot of people say they solve a lot of problems, but don't. Uh, what I'm more interested in is what specifically are you guys doing to help the Kubernetes mission become more reliable so that people can get to more AI? Because there's more data coming. Correct, like data is always coming, right? Yeah. We'll never get away from that. So what we're doing there is we're really taking off some of these tasks uh, on a day-to-day -day that these engineers would have to be doing, you know, managing Kubernetes, making sure everything is set up, um, which can be delegated to an AI teammate, allowing them to have more, more time to work on more critical situations. Yeah. And skits. What's the coolest thing you've seen in uh, Kubia that you can share? I know you can't release some of the news that's coming out at Kuber uh, KubeCon. What's the, what's the coolest thing you're seeing? To keep it broad, yeah. uh, the ability to really delegate end-to-end -end tasks to an AI teammate and knowing that out of 100 times you ask it, you'll get 100 times the same answer. So there's no hallucinations in the models. So take your Cubia hat off for a second and mm -hmm. then just give you a personal perspective. As you look at all the web of uh, the, the cloud companies like the Stripes of the world, and I mean, these are cloud native, born in the cloud companies, and, they, and, they're, and there's new people coming in to do Gen AI. What do you think the biggest challenges for organizations trying to implement the new tech? Uh, data and just making sure that these models are reliable, right? We all know AI, you know, you play with chat GPT, you ask it five times the same thing, yeah. you'll get six answers. <laughs> so, and that becomes a problem when it comes to compliance. So I think that's the biggest challenge uh, organizations are struggling with right now is how do they make these models reliable and repeatable and controllable? Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, you got so much misinformation out there around you know, um, everyone hyping up and flexing their own wares. I mean, like yeah. everyone's working on the best thing. Ah, we're the answer to Edge and AI. It's hard. It's a hard very thing hard. to do. Yeah. Well, when I talked to Amit about this, you know, he's very um, opinionated about uh, Kubia because if you think about, I mean, I knew Kubia before ChatGPT had their moment, and mm -hmm. I remember talking to him about it. They were doing agents before agents. Yeah. And. You know, and then I think Mark Benioff with Agent Force was interesting because, you know, if you're at Kubi, you're probably, ah, he's just, you know, taking our thing. He's validating agents. So I think, you know, you start to see the big adoption, IBM, Salesforce, agents are here. Yeah. Teammates Come. will be people and agents. Yeah. Correct. That's going to be the key formula. The question is, what tasks do they do on the infrastructure? Where does that trust come in? Who decides that? That's going to be the big question. Yeah, I, I fully agree. And we're working with our customers on defining that together with them. When you think about it, there's so many use cases yeah. that you could implement AI teammates. It's all about where are you getting the most yeah. value out of it? Where's the ROI at the end of the day? Because that's a big question that's coming out now out of all these AI <laughs> applications. Where is the ROI on it? Yeah. And that's what we actually really focus on Kubia is finding the right ROI. Chris, final question for you. Your job, growth, what is your focus? What are you working on? What are the key things you're trying to knock down? Yeah. So we're working on growth just in general, new release of a product. We're releasing, we have a lot of announcements coming up. Um, but our, our focus is, of course, new customers as always, but making sure that the customers we have, we are enabling them, that we're working with them. We're actually partnering up. I don't like to even call them our customers, they're our partners. Yeah. So we're really partnering up with them, testing out these different use cases with them. 
and making sure that you know we're providing as much value as possible, which is helping us also navigate our product. Yeah, you know, it's interesting the word partnerships and ecosystem gets usually gets kicked around. Mm -hmm. I think now with Gen AI products and what you guys are doing and others we've been interviewing here is that the intention, the intentions of the parties, yeah, they're much more intentional. That word's been kicked around a lot in conversations. We have intentional relationship because intention intentional means they're working together. There's less of just hey we're partnering whether it's go to market, selling together in market, one selling the other, vice versa, then, but there's actually technical partnerships involved. Yes. Can you share any color on that? Well, um, we can't share too much on it, but we're doing a yeah. lot on that yeah. side with our partners. We are really aligning, like you said, with yeah. them deeply. And it's more about really having that, if you want to call it even an ecosystem with our customers versus just being a vendor uh, to them. It's Okay, it's so final, model. final question. <laughs> Talk to the camera, give the sales pitch, Give the value proposition. What is why should people work with Kubia? Well, what we're doing is we are really revolutionizing the way DevOps and infrastructure operations are being done today with the motion of delegating end-to-end -end tasks. Uh, think about teams that, you know, some of the use cases like Jira ticket solving, which is always a big problem for any company. <laughs> um, think about, you know, your developer being able to come in the morning, open up the queue, and more than 50% of yeah. the Jira tickets have been resolved by their AI teammate, right? So those are some of the values that we bring to the table amongst a lot of other use cases. But whoever is looking to, you know, scale their DevOps teams, their engineering teams, without necessarily needing to scale yeah. headcount, that's where Kubia comes into place. Well, great to have you on the queue. Thank First you time so much. On, right? Well done. Appreciate it. Uh, shout out to Amit and the Kubia team. They're in the uh, wired network, the Cube and NYSE, um, and. Uh, Big fan of the company. Again, they're pre-Series A, getting some great acceleration. I'm John Furrier. You're watching The Cube here at our NYSC studio, one of two studios. The second one's being built out, but this is going to be our home here in New York City as we bring our team here to Manhattan and New York City for founder coverage as well as wall-to-wall -wall tech coverage. Thanks for watching.